today's episode, we are going to continue expanding our knowledge of tools in the arena of lathes. This is Luke of Practical Machinists, and welcome back to another episode of the Lathe Lab. A lot of the stuff we're going over today can also be applied to mills, CNC and conventional milling. But I will be covering it from the perspective of a lathe programmer setup operator. What type of drills are available for CNC lathes today? We're going to cover the four most commonly used drills from my experience and the experience of people that I've talked to in the industry. We're going to go over the pros and cons. What is good about them? What is bad? And then in the end, I'm going to go over what I prefer if I had to choose a drill. So right away, let's hit some obligatory machining content, watch some drills in action, and then we're going to hop right in and dissect drilling. That's your cool, obligatory machining video of the day. Whoever programmed that, set it up, and operated it, he's a great guy and he does a wonderful job. Let's begin the lesson right away. The first drill that we are gonna go over, solid. Solid drills. Whether or not they're high-speed cobalt or carbide, they have a place in a shop. I use them all the time, it'd be fair to say, every day. The pros to these drills so there's two types, high-speed carbide. Cobalt is somewhere in between, but we use mainly high-speed and carbide. Benefit to them, if you have a hole that's so small that you can't get an indexable drill in, this is the way you have to go. Sometimes it's mandatory to use one if you go small enough with your hole. Another pro is your price, especially on your high-speed drills. They are cheap. Another pro with them is they perform very, very well. Solid carbide drills... They are, most of the ones that we use are cooling through. They're excellent. They're very free cutting. The size range on them is, I mean, it's, it, it's virtually infinite. Now, if it's a larger hole, it would not be my go-to for several reasons. And we're going to now cover the cons of this drill. One of the cons are with carbide, solid carbide, buco bucks, man. Some of them are so expensive, especially when you get to the, the higher end, quote unquote, performance tool manufacturers. They're outrageous. Hundreds of dollars for a small carbide drill that's, you know, six millimeter or eight, nine millimeter. Another con to them is once they're worn, you got to pull them out. We send our drills to be reground. When we take them out, we send them to our grinder. They give them a new edge. It never performs as good, but they're okay. Another con on the high speed is the drills walk if you don't spot. Unless you were to get a real short stubby one, I generally don't use high speed drills unless I go in and spot beforehand. Next one that I wanna cover, spade drills. A pro to these, very, very versatile drill. Contact your manufacturer, they make so many drill tips in so many sizes, metric, standard, number drill, letter drill, they make them all. And I think the smallest that we've gone down to using is 3 eighths. And the largest we've gone up to is about one and a half, something like that and everything in between. Another pro to this drill, 90% of them are all cooling through. Additionally, the price. We usually buy the high, we don't really buy the carbide uh, spade bits. But another pro to it is the price on the high speed bits. They are relatively inexpensive. Now we're going to get into the cons. What I don't like about spade drills, they don't perform very well. They perform about as well as the money it is that you spend on them. We used to use spade drills very often, but now that now we don't really use them as often. I don't find that they perform. I don't like the geometry on the bit. There's not a lot to choose from. They do have different coatings and you know different chip breakers on them, so on and so forth. I'm just not a real big fan of them. I find that they don't get a lot of good tool life. I find that they are not very free cutting. It's just not my go-to. If you were cutting non-ferrous, brass, aluminum, plastic, sure, go ahead. But even in that time on aluminum, I just really don't like they, the way they perform compared to the other options. 
These other two options that we're gonna go on, we'll move on to a, another one. This option that we're about to go over is probably the freest cutting and highest performing drill that we use. This is the indexable tip. So as your tool wears, you'll pop that insert off, pop a new one on. Bada bing, bada boom, as you're in the machine. Minimal downtime. I absolutely love the cutting geometry, self-centering, very, very free cutting, very, very easy with the uh, right size drill and the right material and the right machine to really push those cutting parameters to manage that chip. Chip control is huge when it comes to drilling. Another reason I really don't like the spade drills, I really can't push them hard enough. I get long stringers and maybe it's just me, but probably not. But this drill, very, very well performing. That's the biggest pro of this indexable tip that I can think of. Super free cutting, you can really get aggressive with your speeds and feeds, run your surface footage up at the high end, run your inch per tooth up at the high end, and nine times out of 10, they're gonna perform the way you want them, sometimes a lot better. Now let's get into the cons. The biggest con that I can say about this, the price. The price on some of these heads and the drill tips, and especially the way that they've gone up over the past few years, is outstanding. We've seen some price increases of 20 to 40%, on, and I don't think it's just the carbide price, just the price of the tool. Another con that I don't like about it is once that, once that edge wears, you're done. Unless you can find a good tool grinder or a good manufacturer that can take them back, which with this particular brand we do, we do send them to re, be reground, and they have about a 60% refurb rate. So about 60% of the inserts we send them, they're able to regrind and um, we can use them again. Although the height is a little bit different, so you don't want to just change it right off. You're going to have to reteach your tool on Z0. If it was the same price as this next type we're going to go into, I would use these all day long. Best performing for sure. Last, but definitely not least, your indexable square insert drill. Some of the pros to this. For us, one of the biggest pros is your price per insert. It's, a, it, it's like 10% of what that larger indexable drill tip is. Furthermore, the price that you're paying per insert isn't just for one edge, it's for four. You have four edges for this particular one, like a quad drill. Some of them you get three edges, but either way, it's not just one. So as you're in the machine and if you're operating it or if your operator's there and they're running it, you get a little wear on the tool as it's still in the turret, Grab your Torx, I think this is a T9, loosen it, index at 90, blow it out, screw it back in. Same with here, you're ready to go. Two inserts, easy to change, four indexes per edge, and it's very, very affordable. Probably what I like about this the most is kind of a two-tier. I'm able to drill off-center. So on this particular drill, it's a one and a quarter diameter. I can drill off. 50 to 75 thousandths on X50 or X75 drill off center. That gives me two benefits. One benefit is I'm allowed to open up that hole bigger to save me more time on my rough boring or my finished boring or rough. Second thing that's a benefit for is it gives me more room in my bore for the chips to get out. Those are two of the biggest pros with this drill. The cons now on this, which are not many, is... It's not very free cutting. And I find it where I can push an indexable tip drill anywhere from eight up to 15 or 16 thou per rev. Here I'm limited up to like four or six, or if the material's soft enough, sometimes it can get up to eight, but even then my load monitor's ramping all the way up. It's not a free cutting drill. It's a rough cutting drill. You gotta run it a little bit slower on the feed rate. To us, that's about the only con I know of. It just doesn't run. And one benefit to this too is if you have to do flat bottom, if you have a flat bottom bore that you're getting ready to bore right here, you don't have to worry about carving out that drill tip. You folks out there that are set up programmers and seasoned machinists will know what I mean. If you go in there with a drill tip and you have a flat bottom, you got to bore all that drill point out. Here it's flat. You come down, you drill, come in with your bore, hit it to that Z location, move it up, move it down if you have to to clean it up. Bada bing, bada boom. And for that reason, this is the drill 
that if I had to choose one, I would go with. The cost is so cheap per edge. It's so versatile, I can off-center use it as a boring bar. I can bore, I can drill a flat bottom, and I don't have to go as deep in the hole because I don't have any drill point to worry about. So for us, the lack of free cutting in the drill is negated by the fact that I'm probably at about 15% cost per edge versus an indexable drill. So that would be my recommendation for a drill to use would be this one, an indexable square insert drill. Now I want to show you a video real quick of me drilling this off center and then coming back and using it as a bore to open that up. And keep in mind, it's going to save you time on your rough bore because your tool is right there. You might as well drill, come out, rough that bore and go home. You can feed it almost like you could a rough boring tool, maybe not as aggressive, but if your upper turret or another turret's else doing somewhere else, you save the time, it's free time. We're gonna watch that video real quick, then we're gonna get into the conclusion. So there you have it. That reason in that video that you just saw, that's why I prefer this drill. All the other drills are great, minus the spade drill, not a fan. But even that has its place in the shop. I've used them for years and years and years. It's just not my go-to. So I hope you liked the video. If you like the content so far of what we're producing here, like, subscribe, comment about what you would like to see, what type of episode. What I do, as the name implies, is all laid, but Practical Machinist has loads of great videos on milling, EDM, shop tours, loads of stuff. Check it out, subscribe. Also, you can find me at Crusader Machining at YouTube and at Crusader Machining on Instagram. A whole bunch of cool content there, I think helpful videos on my YouTube, and a bunch of cool machining reels of different rough turning, finish turning, drilling, boring that I got over there. Go take a look, and once again, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching. We will see you next time in episode four of The Lathe Lab.